the Boca Black Box. Hope you all come back again to the open mic night in August, first Tuesday. Might even be the first Tuesday, or the first August, first Tuesday. First Tuesday of every month. Yes, and now, what is your last name? Grunfeld. Grunfeld. Big round of applause for High Grunfeld. Call me Hi, the limo guy. I used to have a limousine business in New York, and you're driving around these people, and you keep you know constantly hearing weird things happening in a car, uh, and things outside the car, and people talking, and you're sitting outside there waiting for them to come out of a bar, and here comes a drunk out of a bar, and he goes over to a parking meter, he puts a quarter in, turns the handle, and he goes, Oh my God! It turns to 60 minutes. He looks at it again, and he goes, Oh my God! I lost a hundred pounds. <laughs> I appreciate that. Three guys are walking into a bar and they start talking. It's a beautiful barmaid and she looks at them and she sees they're stuttering. And she wants to play a game with them. She says, listen, if anybody can tell me where they're from without stuttering, then he can have his way with me. First guy comes up, she says, where are you from? He goes, uh, new, 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 she goes, forget about it. The second guy, where are you from? Uh, law, uh, laws, uh, law, law, laws, laws, forget about it. And you're the third guy? He goes, Miami. She grabs him, takes him in the back room, has his way with her, you know. He comes out all steamed up, he goes, uh, 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 Beach. <laughs> <All right. clears throat> Had these two blonde girls in the back seat, and they were talking, of course, blonde girls, and they're talking about sex like all girls do. One girl says to the other one, uh, So, do you have uh, mutual sex? Mutual orgasm? She goes, no, we have all state. Oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. So these two girls sitting in a two blind girls sitting in a coffee shop, and they're talking, of course, like girls talk, and one of them pulls out of the mirror out of her pocketbook and she wants to check her makeup. And she looks at it and she goes, Oh my god, this looks familiar. Her girlfriend goes, Why? Let me take a look. She looks at it, she goes, Of course, it's me, silly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, even in the South, the, the blonde girls, not only in New York or in Boca, they're in the South too. This man is fixing up his apartment, and he's fixing up the kitchen, puts up new uh, <clears throat> cabinets, and he's missing a hinge. And he says to his wife, do me a favor, Betty Lou, go down to the hardware store and get me a hinge. She goes, of course. She goes down to the hardware store, of course the man is busy, she's waiting. And she's looking at all the new appliances and stuff, and he looks at her and says, Okay, man, what can I do for you? She goes, My husband needs a hinge for the door. And he goes, Okay, go get a hinge for her, and says, uh, Would you like a screw for the hinge? She goes, No, but I'll blow you for that toaster. No. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, right. <laughs> so these two girls come out of the coffee shop, the two blonde ones that they were just talking. And now one of them goes, oh my god, there's my husband with a bouquet of flowers. He just came out of the flower shop. She goes, now I guess I'll have to spread my legs for a week. Her girlfriend says, what's the matter? Don't you have a vase? <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, uh, this Jewish guy goes to a rabbi's house. He knocks on the door. And the rabbi opens up. He says, yes, can I help you? He says, listen, my dog just died. Can you do the funeral for my dog? The rabbi says, what? A dog? We don't do dogs. He says, listen, you did a great funeral for my mother a couple months ago and for my father last year. Could you do the dog? He says, we don't do dogs here. Like, this is not a dog place. He says, well, what can I do? It's a part of the family. What can I do for the dog? He says, listen to me. Go across the street. There's a church over there. Go talk to the priest. Maybe they do dogs. He says, oh, thank you, Rabbi. Thank you very much. By the way, if I give him a donation of a thousand dollars, do you think it'll be enough? He goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. You didn't tell me the dog was Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> so this man looks for an old age home for his father. And of course, being Jewish, so he looks at all the Jewish homes, and he can't find any. They're all taken. So uh, he says to him, uh, listen, we're going to put you in a Catholic home. He says, Catholic home? He says, all right. Puts him in a Catholic home. After a week, he comes back and uh, checks up with his father. He says, Dad, how is it going here? He says, listen, it's very nice. They take good care of you here. Very, very respectful. He says, yeah? He says, yeah, listen, there's a man here. He used to be a physician. 20 years he hasn't practiced it. 
but they still call him doctor. And there's another man here. He was a professor in school, college. He hasn't taught for 20 years. They still call him professor. And me, I hadn't had sex in 20 years. They still call me the fucking Jew. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, that concludes our show. Ladies and gentlemen, how about another nice round of applause for all the performers trying out their new material. Thank you to the audience for staying two hours and 15 minutes for this production. Thank you. Oh, thank you, and thank you, and you, and you, and you. And come back August 1st. August 1st, open mic night, Boca Black Box. And I think there's just a few tickets remaining for the Adams family. So.